So, okay, guys, we're going to do a little crash course on the page builder. Uh, right now we've got, we just created a new page set and we just entered in the title and the domain. And so the first thing we're going to need to do is add a, our homepage. So we'll just do a home for now. Page is live, save it. Okay, so we're in a blank um, page here. So we've got nothing in there except for the hello world. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the header. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this message there. We're clicking on it, clicking delete. And we have a default header image here, which is a header with some text overlaid in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and drag that in. And this is the title here. You can change this, uh, learn more button here. Um, you know, these all button basic default stuff. So the thing we wanna do here though is we, you know, most people are gonna to wanna to change this, this image in the background. So first thing we gotta do is click on the box out here and we can see there's a hierarchy. So body, this is the header we just drug in. Um, and, and chime in anytime, Andrew, if you, if you need, if you have questions on, on stuff that I'm going through here. Cool. Um, so we click on the header. This makes sure we can see all three of these highlighted. That means it's housing. This, this one is housing these other two. So it kind of shows us, which is good to know. Um, so we want to go to the main element out here to get the background image because it's set on the header, not the box inside. This box is this kind of grayish overlay that you see here. Um, so we want to, to change the image. We want to go up here. And then we're going to go to the element settings, which is this paintbrush here. And once we're in here, we have a background tab. We'll click on that. And then here is the background um, where we can choose a background. So we'll go ahead and click plus. You can see the background disappeared. And then I'll click images here. And then we can just go ahead and we can search one from Unsplash. We'll say beach. And for this header image, you want to use one that's um, a more of a horizontal image. So we'll just go ahead and use that. And so we've got an issue here, right? Because it's not, it's kind of clipped right here. You see how it's cut off? Tiny. So what that means is we have a background, um, these, the, the image setting. So if the, if the image that we chose was not the full size of what we're looking, you know, the screen size, right? If it doesn't, if it's not that big by itself, this is what we do. So we go into background repeat, we're going to go no repeat and this is going to remove. So it doesn't allow it to, to duplicate because it was duplicating here. And now we have a positioning and so it's on left top. So it's taking the, it's trying to shove it to the upper left and we just want to do center center. And then we have a background size and auto will just use, it'll kind of scale the image. Um, the best that it can. And so we want to use cover and cover will span the whole width of your view. And then also if you want, so from there, um, we have a, a scrolling in a fixed position. If it's scrolling, it'll just stay static in the background. If you do a fixed position, it'll be parallax where it'll look like it's kind of moving up and down as you scroll, it stays. Um, but the text will kind of move up and down uh, up on top of the image overlaid. And so that's how we create, we can change the background image of the header block. Did you have any questions on that, Andrew? Not so far, no. No, no. I'm, I'm with that. Can't take notes, okay. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to go into the layout. We're going to explain the layout here. The the best way to do the layouts is we're going to start with a section. So we go into the, the blocks here and then we'll go down to the layout and then we're going to bring a section in. And these are, you know, we can, we can view it as what it is like, you know, a section of information. So we want to kind of, we want these sections to contain information that, that are relative to each other in most cases. So we'll do one section in and now we have two containers. A regular, a regular container, as you can see, I'll drag inside of the section. So this, this is the section and we can see that our container by itself has, has a padding 
has this, you know, like some padding on the left and the right side of the screen. This is how we can kind of center the information on the view. So if you're on a desktop and things like that, these all, these all work mobily. Um, out of they're the, all responsive, right? Yeah, they're all responsive. Um, so we'll go ahead and delete that. So right now we have a section and we have a regular container. Now, if I drag a container fluid in below this container, we can see that it spans the entire width of the view, of the screen view. And so some, some instances you'll want information to span the entire width of, of the user's screen, the viewer's screen. Sometimes you won't. And that will determine which container you're going to want to use. Yeah, yeah. These containers can be sized. Um, and so if we go into, if we click on the container and we do uh, the element settings here, we can go to dimensions and then we can do a max width on it. And right now it's set to, to pixels, but we don't want to do that. We want to do a percentage. And so if I do 50, now I've got this container um, keeping all of my information in these constraints here. See how it got smaller? Yeah. So that's, that's the basics of the, the containers there. So we're just going to put this back to default. And all you got to do there is click that little blue X. It'll go back to what it was when you drag it in. And I'm going to remove this container as well because we don't want that in our section. We're just going to want to have one section, one container. And then the fun part comes in when we go back to a layout, we have these things called columns. And so this is, you know, you can imagine if you want three images side by side, four images side by side, two, one, or, you know, if you want text on the left and an image on the right, this is just, you know, look, view this as how do you want your information kind of displayed? And so for this instance, we'll do, we'll do a two column here. Inside of the container, I drag it into the inside of the container. I don't need this paragraph. Those are just there so that you know that you can drop things into um, stuff. So, so currently now we have a section, a container, and two, uh, two, columns. two columns. Now if I click on this column here, we got to pay attention to our hierarchy. You'll see that there's a row box here. Now what the row does is it houses these columns. These are automatic. The row is automatically put in when I drug in the two columns. So columns always need to be inside of a row. And so if I click the row, we can see that the blue, the blue box highlights both of these. So that's the, the row is housing the two columns. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? So now I know, you know, so now I can drag this around. I could drag this row, you know, outside. See, now it's outside the container and it goes the full width. Um, but you don't want to do that. You, you want to make sure that you stick with the, the, the standard layouts, which is section, container, and then you put the stuff inside of it. Uh, it that helps a lot with your SEO. Um, and it also makes things, editing things later on, um, a lot easier for you because you you'll know you'll be able to see the layout. It's it's sometimes it's easy to get go a little wild and start dragging stuff all over, um, but as long as you stick to that that's that kind of standardization the section. Three step thing, yeah. Yeah, section container, and then you then whatever kind of columns you want inside of it, you you're gonna have a lot less problems. Um, so if we want to do that, so now let's just grab in a typography block and we'll do a heading. The display headings are really large and this is something that you would use on the header, uh, uh, oh, yeah. on the header image and things like that or something where you really want a, a large um, text, but a headings, uh, these are pretty standard, pretty good size for most um, uses for, you know, call outs and things like that. And we can see that this is already a paragraph. So this is great. You could just, you know, You know, these are great because they're by default in an element that you drag in so that you you can visually see. Otherwise, you just have an empty box um, and you didn't know, you know, it's a little bit easier to see. So yeah. you get a header, put stuff in there, you know, start typing that in. And then if we do a default component, we can do a responsive video, which 
responsive video means it'll it'll size it the best that it can, automatically size it to whatever can whatever the housing um, element is, which is the the column here. So it's a call six. So this is never going to be bigger than what this can what this is. The call six is establishing the video constraints. Right. Okay. And um, because the because YouTube and other video embeds use an iframe, sizing them, um, there's some stuff with that that you that that you could do. You can just resize it like that. Um, and then if I want to center this video, uh, there's a couple things that we could try. So first one is on this on the the box here, which is the, the iframe itself. We're not going to be able to, to center it on that probably. So we'll try to do a call six. We're going to go up one on the hierarchy to the column. Yeah. And then um, we'll do this, the element settings back to the paintbrush. Cause we, now we're going to look at some settings in here. Sometimes you can text center, but it didn't drag it because it, it, it's a different elements, but it did change our text down here. It put our text okay. in the center. Um, so let's see, let's we can try one other thing. Oh, that's not gonna work. Yeah, so the best way when working with an iframe is just the responsive iframe is to establish the size that you want based on the column. So if I change this um, call MD six, remove those. So call MD six means on like desktop view, uh, most non mobile views will use a call MD six. Um, so call is the small view like mobile phones. Okay. And Six means, you know, there's 12 columns in a row. So it's taking up six of them is we're assigning six. So if I change that and then I do a call dash MD dash three, now the video is a lot smaller because it's, we're assigning that only to use three of the 12, three, columns. three oh. of the 12 columns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's the way that you're going to want to ideally, um, do that the the code if you're going to get further down if you want a little bit more variation you have to go into the the code of the iframe and you can start establishing size constraints in there but that's um definitely for more advanced users uh and and people that are that are more familiar with website coding from scratch um it is possible here um As we can see, we can get into the code itself. This is the iframe here. And then you can start as, you can start putting um, classes and sizes on that, but we're not gonna get into that for this video. That's, um, a, that's an advanced um, feature there that you would have to, you would wanna learn. So we'll go back into the, into the better editor here. And so if you just want, um, one video up here so let's see wait so we got that we got sections container two columns let's do a uh let's do another section so you can see how to stack those oops so we'll drag another section in below this one so make sure you get it down to the bottom and then we'll do a container fluid. And so now this one's gonna span the entire width. And so we can kind of see what this looks like if we put this in there. So maybe we'll just do four images here. So I did a four column there. So we have four columns. And then the next thing I'll do is a default components and we'll do a responsive image and I'll show you guys how to change the images. And so we'll just drag in one into each column.
And then we can go ahead and double click on the image itself and we'll search for on Unsplash again. So click my images and then do uh, a nice car image. We'll do this one here. And then we'll do the same on this one. Same thing, double click. We've got another car there. And you can kind of see that because I'm choosing images that um, are kind of full full width and screen, these most of these are images are bigger than what I have this. Um, In the box, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So what will happen though is if I do something like this and I choose one of these, well, oops, we, we, you know, we kind of got an issue here, right? If I want these to all line up. This might be cool in some instances if you're trying to do that, but you want to make sure that if you're doing things like this, you'll want to um, establish that either go either download the images and resize them yourself so that they're the same size or try to use ones that are all um, similar, you know, width horizontally. Otherwise you can have this, this there, you know, you don't, you're trying, you know, for visual consistency, you want to use images that kind of, are symmetrical um, but that's what will happen how are you getting the um the the images up so how how do you upload your images and okay perfect yeah so if i say i want to change this one here um all i got to do is go to my images on the tab here yep and then i'll click upload and then i can go ahead and just upload one and now it's there and so these all, you can see we have images here um, that I've uploaded that you can choose from. Um, but if I choose that, there it is. So as simple as that. Um, let's see what else we got here. So that's how you do a, this. Let's, let's take a look at what we've built so far. So we'll go up, we'll save it. And then we can click this right here, this preview page. This will open up our preview. And as we can see, we've got our header image. And we've got the first section with two columns and then the, our small column here. And then we've got another section with four images. So we can't, we can't really see uh, the, Im the sections right? Cause it's just all white, but you can do things like change the background color on a section. So if I, if I click this section here, make sure that I'm on the section element. It's real important to, to look at the hierarchy and which ones you're selecting on clicking yep. in, in, in here will get you close. You know, you, a lot of times you can get right to it. Sometimes you can't. So like this one, if I click, this ain't going to change the, the background uh, image. It's going to be the box. Because I have, because we have an overlay that kind of to allow your text to show more. Some images will be really hard to read this text without this this uh, transparent black box in front, um, in yeah. between it, right? So it's just important to pay attention to the sections and which ones you're trying to get to. So if I click on this section here, we go to the elements brush here, the settings of that element. We can go to background, and if I want a color on it, all I got to do is just pick a color. You know, so we could do like a kind of a dark gray color there. And we'll click OK. Uh oh, but now we can't see our text, right? So now all I got to do is I click on the text. And the same thing, we're in the settings still. So and then I go to the typography and I can change the text color here. So let's just make that white. And then I'll do the same on this one. And because I clicked OK, it kind of saved my last, my recent one. And this is a really useful tool. Pretty handy when you want to make sure that all your texts um, stay the same color. So I just go ahead and open that color, click on those. And then um, we'll save that again. We'll take a look. So perfect. We can see that this changed. Now I know that, you know, this is our section. 
we can actually visually see it now because we changed the background on it. And these are things that you're going to want to do when you're doing um, just to break up some of the, the visual flow. Uh, you can do a really light gray background on a section and then a white background and that'll give you a, a, an information, um, a, a way for your brain to process the information like, okay, this information is relative to the information in here, right? Otherwise, you just get a kind of a blank canvas and a bunch of stuff all over. Floating around, yeah. And then, so, if you were looking to do a video on the header, what we're going to try is we'll go up to the blocks, make sure that we got a layout in there, and we'll do a... We'll do a column in there. Header, row, call 12. All right, yeah. And then we'll do a default component. We'll do a responsive video. And that's huge. So instead of a column 12, what we're going to do is we're going to change this call MD. We have larges. This is, these are very specific. So, um, you know, a large XL and, and medium MD, these will be for all different viewports. So some people have really um, extra wide screens. Some people are working from an iPad and these can set that. Um, in most cases, you'll just need to set the, at least you have to have the, the call. And because we use a bootstrap framework, bootstrap, um, the you build from small mobile up as far as they're concerned. So your call 12 will be your mobile view. And in most cases you want a call 12 because you want the information to stack vertically because you don't have the, you don't have the real estate to put two things side by side on a phone in most cases. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take the call 12. We're going to take all these off just for demonstration purposes. So a call 12 works. This says it's going to be 12 columns across on any screen. Now, if I want to make sure that it's only going to be six across on a desktop, I do a call MD dash six. Now it's small. Now we have a problem because it's shoved over to the left and we want to make sure that that's in the center. So we have a couple tricks that we can try. One is we can set, a margin and a margin is outside of the box padding and a pa and padding or outside of the box spacing and padding is inside of the element spacing. Right. So you can, so you can space on the outside of an L on the outside of this blue box here or the, on the, with padding, you can space on the inside. We do have this in the dimensions here. We have these settings here. So if I just, you know, if I crank that up, you see how it moves. Yeah, that I'm setting a padding from this blue bar in because it's inside a padding's inside. Now, if I do a margin on the left, it's gonna sh it's gonna move it over, right? Now you might think this might work because um, now it's in the center mostly, but this is not the way that we want to do it. That's just a demonstration to show you that a margin's outside padding and a or outside spacing and padding is inside of the box. So we, we just kind of want to clear that. So we're going to click the blue X here. And what we're going to actually do is we're going to set a class. It's called, it's a bootstrap class. And we're going to try M X, which is we're going to margin and X is the, the horizontal access that we, we want to do. And we're going to dash and we're going to do auto. Now what this class does is it's set no matter what viewport, it's it's automatically setting the padding on each side so that it's centered into the of the of the view screen of that container. Exactly. And so that's how you're going to want to use um, to do it with the uh, the videos because they're in an iframe, and iframes are a lot trickier to work with if you. Um, yeah, I think I tried to um, I tried to add a video from Vimeo, so I put the Vimeo link in, and I had no luck. It kept saying something was wrong. So, 
Yeah, so Vimeo too, I know that they have settings in where you can say this video can only be embedded on certain websites and you might want to check those settings because if you didn't allow it to embed on your website or pay today pages. You know, that, that might that that may have been it. It may be one of my videos that I, I turned in, embedding off. Yeah, and so that would that would not it, it wouldn't show up then. So this is how you can center um, that. So just to go back over it, we have a call twelve, and I'll show you what it looks like on mobile, and why it's important to to do that. So we'll go over here and we'll preview it first, just to make sure it's working. Bang, there it is, um, right in the center. Now we also have another cool feature, which is these are the view sizes up here on the top left. We've got desktop, you know, iPad, and we can see how it changes. Yeah. And then we also have small. And this is this is working because we set the small to a call 12. Now if I call six this, because we have it on, on big size, the call medium, right? Which is, it stays in here. It's only six. It's only using six of the 12. And then we're just shoving those six into the middle. And then on small, it's using all 12 of the columns. But if I change this to a call six, now we got a problem here. That's why we want to make sure that our calls are usually going to be 12 on most things because you don't have a lot of real estate horizontally. So all I got to do to fix that is I'll just put that back to a call 12. And is there any, um, any like resources to show the meaning of, of, of those? Cause that looks really useful, but obviously it's, it's not, yeah. code, it's just a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, the bootstrap documentation, um, is very well done. They have, it's really easy for even, you know, um, Cool. Uh, they kind of lay it all out for you and it's not super like technical, but they'll go over the basics of, you know, here's the columns, here's the, here's the rows, here's the layout. Um, so, so we have that, we got that fixed. Now we have another things too, that we can do. Now this text is a little bit big for right here. Right? So what if I want a small, I want to bring that down. All I gotta do is click on it. And we'll go into the typography here. Now it's set to 44 PX, but if I do a two and then I go to dash REM, now it's a little bit smaller. But because we're in the mobile view, this font setting will only activate when someone is viewing this page on a mobile device. The browser will read what, what, um, what their screen view size is and we'll assign what we do in this mode. So anytime you want to make sure that, um, and this is how you can get really good about uh, making sure that your websites are mobile responsive and they look great even on, even on big. So we can see here, the text didn't change. It's still the way that we had it. It too, yeah. But it did change when if I go you're, back if to you're the little icon to go into the mobile view. If you're in that, and you and you make a change does yes if you if i'm in here and i make any changes to any of these settings they will activate only at this view height so for good practice though always get everything the way that you want it to look on the desktop first yeah then go in and work your way down through the views and make the necessary changes that you want to make and what did the REM mean? That the REM two. So, so the REM is a sixteen pixels is the standard, I believe, um, as far as computers go. REM means it's two times that sixteen. So if we do, uh, it's yeah, it's so it's two times sixteen pixels. Um, if I do, what's cool about REM is the reason I do, I use that. This is kind of a personal preference. Some people don't like to do this. If you use EM, 
you run the risk of if I use, if I put an EM on this box and then I go in here and I do a, on the heading, another EM, they're exponentially getting larger. It's using, it's multiple, it's, it's multiplying the housing. So just for general people, don't use that. You don't, you don't, you probably don't want to use that because you're going to run into some, some uh, interesting, interesting things if you do that. But the REM, just view it as 16 pixels times 2 times 1.5. Uh, I use that because a percentage is a lot more responsive than a set pixel. Uh -huh. If I set this to pixels, it'll always be pixels. Now, now the program, because I reloaded, it took my REM and reset it because it knows. It knows what I set that to. But if I want to make a change, so if I do like a 1... REM and 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 again the font sizing which one of these that you use is definitely pers uh, personal preference there's a lot of people will tell you one way or the other um, so it's just going to be whatever works best for you but REM is t will be a multiplication of the standard pixel size so I, I like to do like you know 1.5 on, on usually in mobile um, and since we're on the typography stuff, if I ever if I want to center this, I can do that here, right? All I did was I opened up the typography on the element settings, and I just click text center. I can go right. Now, if it's text center here, and I go back to big, it's not centered, because remember we're only setting the settings for the mobile view, which makes yeah. sense in this case because I want it centered on mobile, and I don't want it centered on the other one. And so I just center that up and then you can put some stuff below this video if you want, or get rid of it. And so that's how those work. Um, most we have here. What about all the um, menus and navigation stuff? Up on, up on top here. Uh, I, no, in terms of the website. So oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Bar. Yeah, you, you want to check out a nav bar? Okay, so we've got our homepage. Let's just work with this for now. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to exit out of this. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to create a template. Um, now, this, is a, this isn't a website template as far as that template. This is a template. Um, it could be considered a wrapper. Uh, this will be like a nav bar that wraps all of your pages so that it shows up on all of them. And that's what we're going to build. So we're going to build a nav bar and a footer. And so I'll just title it nav bar and footer so that I know nav bar footer and that's okay. And our template, our page type needs to be a template so that it knows um, how we're going to use this. And then we'll just do pages live, save that. And now from here, let's see, I'll go ahead and delete that. And I'm gonna just drag in a, so we'll go over to our blocks here. And then we're gonna go look for a, a header. So this, you can see that the, these are a little bit hard to see, but you can kind of see which ones, um, you can kind of get the gist of it. So we'll go ahead and just drag one of those in. So now we've got a nav bar. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this. Actually, let's put a footer in while I'm here. Um, let's just do, we'll do that one. So now this looks weird, right? Just cause they're stacked, but this is okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this. And then we're gonna go into the expert editor we only have to do one thing here. Open that up. Most of you, I didn't save it. Let me go back in there. Okay, save. There we go. 
my computer was having an issue there. Okay, so once we went into the expert editor, these are the tags. So all I got to do is I got to click on the header, and this is the top um, header I drug in, and this is the end of it. It shows me the end of it right here. So all I got to do is click on the outside of that, and we're going to do a code that looks like this. So two underscores and then content and then two underscores. Make sure the content's in all capitals. And this is telling, um, the, telling us where to inject our pages that we, that we choose to use with this uh, header. So I want the information from our homepage to go below my header. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I want the footer to be below my content. And so that's all we got to do. We just, just put that in. We'll save it. We'll go back to our page set. And then in our page settings here, we don't have a template selected. We can see that we don't have a template here. So we'll just go into our page settings. And now I'm going to assign I'm going to assign that template. So here it's it knows we created our navbar footer template. I'm just going to click that. And I'm going to click save. And we'll go back to our page set here. And then I'll preview the home page. And there's our header and our footer. So these are really neat. It doesn't have to be a, a, a nav bar header and a footer. You can create templates that wrap content that, that are different stuff. Like if you want um, a specific call to action on every page, you can inject that in. Okay. Um, but that's, that's how you use the headers and footers. And what you would do here, um, since we'll, since we'll do it is we have a home page there. Um, we'll go back to the editor and we can see that our content injections there in the proper spot, these links, all I gotta do is I click on it and we can see this href here. This is where this button will go. When someone clicks on this, this is the URL it's going to go to. Um, so this, you know, this, you can change these to, to whatever you have. If you have a one page with a pricing, you would do something like hashtag pricing. And then on our homepage, we would go set that ID by, which I can show you if you want, but um, usually you just want to, you just need these to go to URLs in most cases. Um, mm -hmm. And so you just go through, you can set all these however you like. And then this button here, make it whatever you want. If you want it to be the, the login, if you want to change this image up here, just double click on it. Same thing as, as we did before. We just either upload one or choose one. Uh, for these, it's really uh, smart to do a, a long horizontal image and sized relatively close to the size it's going to be on the website. So like this one is one that I have done. We'll use the white text one. I'll just double click on it and there it is. We can save that. We'll recheck over here. And then we can see that it's in there. It's a little bit small, but that's because of the footer that I chose. Um, you can resize things like that too. You just click on the corner of it, resize. Now mind you, this is gonna make our, our header a little bit bigger, but there it is. And in most cases, that's not too bad. If you wanted, um, there's one thing that was, people do like is to have this nav bar stick on the top. Yeah. When you scroll down, you see how it disappears. Some people don't want that. And so a quick fix for that is I think we can do it from here, but we might have to do it in the expert editor fixed top. If I save that and then we go back into the preview, refresh the page and now it's stuck on there. But you can see we have a little bit of an issue. It shoved this up because it, the computer believes that this is no longer it, it's overlaying because we told it to stick to the top. So a quick fix for that will be, we'll go ahead and save this and we'll go back in here to our, our homepage.
And then all we got to do here is we want to get to the header and we're going to put a little bit of a margin on top. And we can do that with a class or we can just use the settings here. So we'll just, we're going to try this and see if this is what we want. It might, a margin might not work. It might be better to use a padding here, but we'll try this first just so that we can see. Yeah, see that didn't work as the way I wanted it. So we'll try padding on top. And we've only got a certain view height to work with for this header. So this is, you know, these are things that, you know, if, if you're trying to do more advanced things and particular things, you're going to have to learn a little bit on. Um, and so what we've, we've got a view height here that we're going to have to fix now which is our minimum set at 400. And so we're going to, we're going to increase this. We're going to, we're going to say it's uh we're going to go minimum height 800 and you can see how it got a little bit bigger, right? Now that gives us play to push the padding down and still have this kind of line up in the center the way we want it. And now we're back in business and we have a sticky top. So, you know, for advanced features and things like that, you, there's going to be a little bit of a, a learning curve on that. But I think for the, you know, the basic stuff, you know, a lot of, you, a lot of times you're not going to need that level of detail for most instances, unless you're really um, fully going into web de development and things like that. So what else can we, what else do you have any questions on? Um, does that kind of give you that kind of, do you remember, you know, that kind of solve your video problem there, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I, um, the containers element is really good that you were right. That made things a bit clearer. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'd always, if I'm doing this for a client, then I would, um, I would be starting from a template, I think. Um, okay. and, um, it's good to understand that, you know, sometimes it was going to be easier, I guess, just to remove a um a box or a container rather than try and move it around it might be better sort of putting something in uh, sorry you know removing and then replacing rather than yeah absolutely so let's well i'll go back into the video one now that we have a little understanding um we can do something like that so from this template this is the one that we were working from we had three here three columns right as we can see, so these are call uh, call MD fours, and we're gonna we're just gonna remove two of them. Then, then that's why, yeah, templates are good for this because if you only want one video, you go in here and you just kind of remove the stuff that you don't need, and then you just gotta modify what you got left. So, we have a call MD four here, and if I go up one, we're in a row, and so if we go. Is this the auto one we did? Yep, that exactly right. So we'll leave this as a call MD4 and we'll just do an MX dash auto enter. And now we've got it in the center. Maybe that's okay. a little bit small. Increase the, increase the size. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll take this MD4 off and we're going to do a call dash MD dash six. And it didn't change. The reason it didn't change is because we still have settings for call large for and call XL for. Now, all I'm going to do, you can, you can either change these and make a call XL six and a call large six if you want. Um, but just for speed purposes, I'm just going to remove those. Those are just extra levels of detail as far as the system knows on, and as far as telling it what size for what view, um, Right. For what display. Exactly. So as soon as I removed them, there, bam, it went to the call, um, call MD6. And so that's how we do that. Um, so we can see this is in a section, and then we've got a couple column boxes here. So if I, the other cool thing that you guys can do is all, if you don't want this in here, but you don't want to lose it, you just go ahead and hide it. You could turn that off, and if you save this, and we do a preview, we can see that it's no longer there. But if I like, you know, maybe I do like that, and I want that back. All I got to do is come in here and unhide it, 
And that way you don't actually lose any of these kind of neat elements um, that you get from templates and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you just might not want to use them. Um, and if I refresh again, now it's back. And cool part about sections is it makes things moving around real easy. So I just drag it in. One thing I want to show you, if you look on the hierarchy on the left, you see how it's the, the yellow box is only over section right now? Yeah. Well, that's not what I want. A section should be housing. You see how the yellow box changed to all around everything? It's housing the body, uh, every hierarchy that we have now. Yeah. So just that slight movement changes where it's where I'm dropping it. I want to make sure that my sections are out are, are the big box housing everything because I want it to be its own thing. If I put it here, I'm putting a section inside of a section at this point, which we don't want. Then, then we're going to end up with a little bit of a, of a, a weird thing. Uh, yeah. Hierarchy stuff. That's not going to be easy to debug later or move things. So I want to make sure that I'm outside of all sec. I want to make sure that it's everything. So an easy way to do that is just look on the left, make sure the yellow box is, is, containing around everything you're moving a section there weren't you yep yeah I just yep. grab that section um, I can move any of these sections maybe I want join our mailing list up above I'm just gonna click on it and I'm gonna put it in here see I don't want to put it there I don't want I don't want to put it there I want to make sure that I put it in a in a big one Oop, almost got it. there we go so you see how the yellow box is around everything now? Yeah. And I let go. That way it's st it maintains its um, integrity. If I put it inside of another section, then when I try to move a section, I'm moving all kinds of stuff that I don't want to move. And this is so real good to do sections and containers makes things. You can you could redesign your whole layout however you want really easy if you do it that way. Um, this is the move. So you just kind of click, make sure you're on the biggest element that you want to move. I got all this stuff in here. Um, you can also move things around inside, uh, you know, just moving columns, you know, side by side, each other, stuff like that too. But easiest way, make sure put, put relative stuff in sections and then you can move those around to change the layout of the website, the template, anything that you're working with. Um, and a lot of times it allows you to get a lot more um, value because you can do, you know, five different versions of a template that you got and they'll all be, they'll all be great. Just kind of based on your layout, you can change the layout a bit. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so you can service a lot more clients and, and make sure that they don't all have the exact same website. You know what I mean? And do you have, um, are there any sort of, um, things like carousel images, uh, slideshow type options? Uh, the carousel stuff is a little bit more tricky. It requires a little bit of um, coding. So currently right now, if you, if you want to do that, you're going to have to, um, you, you can look up some bootstrap carousel blocks um, from bootstrap itself, their documentation, and you can kind of implement those. Those are a little bit more advanced um, actions. We'll, we're, we're looking into um, creating a couple more blocks that you guys can use for that. Um, but as of right now, you can just, you can find any, um, any of those, just search bootstrap carousels and the, you'll, you'll see a bunch of them. Um, you'll kind of have to, you know, do a little research and understanding on how those work. Uh, they, they're all a little bit differently, uh, you know, depending on where you got it, but they're pretty easy to implement. You would just grab the code, go into the expert editor, um, and then you would just paste it in, but then you're going to have to make sure that the, you get all the parts of it, like the script. And are you, um, so, so this is the infrastructure that we're working in here is, is called bootstrap. Is it? Is that yes, correct. Bootstrap, shirt, boot, yep. Bootstrap four, um, I believe whatever the latest bootstrap version that they have is, is what we're building in. Okay. Um, so anything that you use from that's that's bootstrap compatible or built with bootstrap will be uh, uh, will work really easy inside of this framework here. And so uh, if I didn't show you when you go to the expert editor, you may have seen all this text just in one 
giant clump here. All you got to do is click anywhere and just click this format document and then it'll lay the things out. So if I, my header, I can see my header starts, ends here. And then look, we've got our first section. This is a real easy way for you guys to understand oh, yeah, yeah, that's how nice. to find which one you're looking at. Because in the in when you can see it, you're like, yeah, I want to change that, but I got to do something inside the expert editor. Okay, well, how do I find it in here? You can say, okay, it's the fourth section down. So I know this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Okay, so now I know I'm in the right section and now I just got to figure out where what information do I want to, you know, modify here? Um, so it's a good way, you know, save you guys some time and time and digging around um, for that. You also have a split preview here. This can help you as well. This is kind of, obviously it's not a full width, so you need to have some constraints as far as view and the way things look. Um, and see, we didn't mobile optimize any of this, so you can see there's, uh, some issues here, right? So if we go back out of here, we go back into here. So as soon as you get your guys' layout done on the desktop view, go to the go to the iPad view, make sure things are looking okay here. And see if so for this one, I would probably want to stack these. which means I don't want a call. Um, I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I just want call MD eight and that, and then I'll do this same thing here. I'll get rid of these. Call 12. And then I'll see. stacked there oops MD dash four and so that's gonna put it back over there and so what I'll have to do is one of the one the sizing for um, iPad I believe is we're gonna have to figure out which one of these it is is it the XL or the large? Um, and then, a, then assign that on here. If I wanted to make this stack, so it'd be like a hold dash LD dash 12. So it's not the large one. It might be uh, SM dash 12. It's not that one either. Um, So yeah, I don't remember which one it, which one of these ones it is, but you just as soon as you find it, it'll it'll kick it down. Um, and I would probably also the reason why is I I need to establish that it's on this one as well. Um, if I don't set it on both, it'll still try to stick it in to the side of it because this one's not telling it, you know, to span the full width. But yeah, so you're on on the left, is it? Do you need to be in the iPad view or something? No, I'm in the iPad view here, and then I'm on the yeah, see, that's the row, so it's the correct one. It's because I deleted all these in the earlier, I don't remember which one um, it was, so I'd have to go back and look. But as soon as I figured out which is it a call LG, the call uh, MD, this is like medium. Um, in the bootstrap documentation, it'll also, um, they can, they'll, they'll tell you exactly which one I just, we don't have time to go look it up currently. Um, but that's what I would do. I would just go find that and then, um, make that, make that change, just assign it to both. Um, so you're getting a pretty good idea. So one thing I did here, if you notice, we have a header image here and we have these mountains. Okay, but this is its own, it's its own thing, right? Well, I have a section here, but it's the same image and they're all kind of working together. How I did that 
was I set the background image on this section and I had to do it to all these. These all individually had to, I had to set that background image. So if I go to this section here and I go background, I click on this, I can see it's the same image I used for the header. And the reason I did that is because I wanted one scrolling kind of cool looking background behind every one of my sections. But if I take, if I take this off, um, we're going to see that this, this goes away. Um, and see, so now we can see that it still works. We have that, right? It's parallaxed. And then I got a new image, but this is the same image parallax. So it still looks like it's the same, you know, in, as, as far as positioning. Yeah. Okay. And so if you guys want that effect, just make sure you go into each section, you change the background image. And then you got to make sure that your um, settings are the, are the same. So for, for example, this one, I have it fixed, which makes it parallax cover makes spans the whole view width, no repeat. And then you do center center. And now on this section here, I would, I would pick the same image and I would set the same settings. And that's how you get that effect of a, of a scrolling background image uh, across the entire thing. So every, each section you want that to, to show, just do the same thing. Fixed cover, no repeat, center, center. Uh, if you want to change the video URLs, I didn't go over this yet. Um, all you got to do is click on it and you can set the ID here. So if we go to um, just pick any video from YouTube, I should be able to grab this, this ID here. We'll go back. Oops. things going off so if I click here and I just paste that in now it changed okay. um, so that's real easy just kind of grab the ID of the video itself and you're good to go so uh, we did color, we covered header, changing images, center, the, the settings on it, scrolling versus fixed. We did the layout, the section container, container fluid with the rows and the columns. The, and then uh, one thing, if you ever get to something where you're trying to, you're trying to change the layout or, um, you know, if something, if you're, if you're trying to do something and you're in the settings here and you're like, man, this thing's just not changing, right? Make sure you look up here at the classes because these, these are the, the, these will override everything. So if I want to change the, you know, the margin, right. But it's like, man, it's not working. I've, it's not working because I'm, I have an MX auto set. It won't, it will not change with, without me getting rid of that first. So always look at anytime you run into a problem where something's not changing, make sure you check up here into these classes. Um, that's exactly what I was trying to do. <laughs> yep. So that's, yeah, you got to make sure that you look at those. Um, cause you'll get in and you're like, man, it's just not changing. It's not changing, but it's, it's because we, we probably have something up here. Um, we went over the images, um, how to center uh, and change them. So like this uh, one. Contact form. Oh, contact form. Yeah, we can do that. So let's stick one of those in here. Well, we've got one here, but we'll go back to our other demonstration. Demo. So we'll go to our blocks here and then we have contacts. <clears throat> and here's some forms. Uh, any one of these work. 
Great. And all we got to do is just drag one in. So we'll drag in this blue one here. We'll stick it right there. Make sure that we're outside of our sections. The reason I didn't put this in a section is because it came with one. This block has one on it already, as we can see here. It, it's created its own section. And oh, then yeah. It, and then it created its own container, as we can see here. So I didn't need to build that layout before I stuck that in there. You got, you'll want to be mindful of, of things like that. Some of these have, some of these do that. Most of these pre-built ones will, will create their own sections. Um, but just to just to check that, you know, if you try to drag that block inside of something in here, you might not need to drag the whole thing in. You'll just want to grab uh, the container, right? So if I go here, okay, I'm I'm on. The, I made sure that I'm on the container of this. All I can, if I I don't want it in this section, I want it up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it below the container of this section here. And see, so now I've got a container there and a container here housing the contact information. Mm -hmm. And so you can, that's how you can pull stuff out. And then I don't need this section anymore. So we'll just get rid of that. Um, and now I got to change the text because you can't read that. And so there's some cool stuff with the typography. Um, you can click the bigger box. A lot of times the row or you can set it on the container. Sometimes it will get all of them, sometimes it won't. Um, but if you work your way from the biggest housing elements down, if you don't mind all of them being the same, um, it can save you having to click on 400 paragraphs and change the text, you know, if you had a big long list. So try it, try to set the typography uh, color on the biggest one first and then work your way down. And so this, this is fine. We have a contact in here now. Um, in order to check it, I'm going to go into the expert editor really quick. And we're right below this is heading. So that's fine. And see, this is a jumble. Just right click and go format document. And then this is heading. And there's a lot of red lines here, but don't worry about those right now. So, they they're not actually it's just thinking it's thinking something's wrong because it's, it's trying to check the text but it's not um so we have a contact here i'd love to hear from you the key to the contact form is what's inside of these this this form tag here this is the information that will be um get collected if you if you're dragging if you're kind of modifying a, a block that you drug in, you have to make sure that this piece, all of this information is housed with inside of this form. So if I took this, this section out um, and I put it down, down one right here, this is no longer going to work. This form, it doesn't, it doesn't know. It doesn't know what to do when you submit the information. That's what this, this form tag tells it to do. It tells it where to go and what to do with it. And this, this is how it sends into um, pay today. So just make sure that your forms, you don't, when you're dragging form stuff around, uh, you keep this, this section together. Does that make sense on that? Yeah. 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 And, and that's what it puts it into the CRM. Same exactly. Time. Yeah. Because if you take it out, then it it won't work. It'll break, and you won't you won't actually be collecting the the lead capture. Um, and so you can change stuff. You can change what it says. Um, this required. If you don't want, um, you're going to want the name and the email required. Uh, otherwise, you can get spammed by you know Google bots and things like that. You, you might still. Google does some things you might still get some of those but your phone you might maybe you want the phone optional but maybe you need it required maybe you don't want anybody to submit without a um, do all this stuff in the um in the front end editor uh this one I believe we can let's let's take a look we'll go back in here we'll go to the contacts um form control
Now we're not going to be able to set the required in here in this view. Um, if you want to do that, I mean, it's a little bit more advanced. Um, the reason why is because we can't access, uh, it's not showing us the classes up here of the, hold on, let's see if I, okay, phone, it shows us form control. We'll take a look. We'll go back in here. I'll format that again. Okay, form control. Yeah, because it'll only show us the classes. It's not showing us every attribute of this element. Um, and so to make it required, all I got to do is right after the class quotation, you see how the quotes, there's a class equals and then quote. And then these are what we, when we do like the MX auto and stuff, it goes inside here. So all we gotta do right after the class, just go required. And as long as I spelt that correctly, this will not allow me to submit on this form until I put um, information into this field. So we'll go back to the advanced editor. Uh, and then we'll we'll preview this just to see what happens. So name, right? It, it asks for our name. I try to submit, can't enter email. Submit. See, so it worked. Um, so I can't submit because I put a required on the phone. So we can just, you know, you put a phone in there. Now if I submit, it's submitted. Now I set it to its defaults to, to a thank you page, but because we haven't built a thank you page out yet, it just took us back to the home page. So you can see up here in the URL. So yeah. as soon as I submit, it did submit and we can, we'll be able to see, you know, their information on the builder. So yeah, we have a bunch of different contacts forms, the ones with the Google Maps. Uh, if we wanna drag in a Google Map one, make sure I'm outside of that section. Now these, these iframe um, Google Maps, you'll have, to, you'll have to put in your address on the Google Map. Um, they have a little tool that'll make the iframe embed for you. And then you're gonna have to copy that code out and then come back in here and paste it in if you wanna change this stuff. Or you can find the, the URL ID and paste it in the expert editor on this one. Um, again, that's an advanced, a little bit more of an advanced feature, but it's pretty easy to do uh, once you've done it once. So yeah, this is the Google Maps. Their, their little Google Map Maker tool It'll probably give you the entire iframe, and so you can just copy that, and then you come back in here, find where this one is, yeah, and you can paste it in. Just make sure that you check the width and the height, um, and set those. Google Google Maps will will set their their numbers for this, but as long as you have this default one in here, so you could just paste in theirs right above it, and then take that. Make sure that the width that they say on theirs is 100, and then set the height to 300. Oh, yeah. And it'll be exactly the same and it'll work uh, super easy. So just, you only need to know, and the reason you need to know that is because that's the layout that we have it set on. Um, on this one here. So it's, you know, the, the height was 300 and then the width um, was a hundred percent for the, for the box. So if you, if you have a height of like 600, this is going to look a little bit different when, when, when you just paste it from there. So that's why you got to make sure that those just make sure it's the same. And then you have the same look and this same thing. This is, this is the form here. These work uh, just make sure the information you're trying to collect is inside of those form tags and you're ready to rock. Now there's a, um, have you done the booking builder, the booking uh, appointment config? No. 
Okay, let's just do a quick look at that. Um, so we'll go up here to the master navigation. We can just, go a, our... just a quick one on the website. Can you integrate if you already or they already have a website? Can that be integrated in or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The, the, the contact form and the, um, the booking forms. Yeah, everything, everything will work. There's a, if you're, if you're using, um, what is so, it? So uh, if, you know, if a client that I'm trying to, you know, they want everything else and they want the integration with the rest of it and they've already got a website they want to keep, can they just like, yeah, just yeah. Adding? Yes. So the the answer is yes. We can. Um, you can definitely use the elements because the the main the main collections. Uh, you know the contact uh, blocks and things like that. Can you would just grab one, copy the code out? You got to paste it over. There's some little modifications that you'll need to do. WordPress um, for yeah. one changes the way that um, they inject a couple things to uh, where you would paste in the booking configuration. Um, and so what we've done, what we've had to do from that is you have to go in and you're gonna have to change a couple, you're gonna have to remove a little bit of, tiny bit of information and um, change a URL on the code itself in order to, to integrate it. But yeah, they, it does work, we've done it, I've done it a number of times with a couple other clients. Um, and so, yeah, that's, it's totally doable. And if you, if you run into that, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, you can reach out to me and I can, we'll do that together. Yeah. Cool. Um, do another recording. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what was it? Okay. We're doing the booking config. So all I got to do is create an appointment here. Looks like I've already got one made. Um, well, there's a, there's a how to on how to make these. So I'm not going to go over that right now, but what I do want is I want this embed code. So because I've already made this booking configuration and you can have a bunch of these. So I've, you can have a 30 minute um, consultation call. You can have a one hour in-person estimate. You know, your clients can like, yeah, we, we allow these, we go to their house or whatever. And you can set the days and the times and, and all that. And availability. Buffers either side. So if it's like a, you've got 15 minutes and then you can't put something in, for 15 before the next 15. Exactly. Yeah. There's a buffer. Yep. So you can set, you can set the buffer, you know, the appointment set. So this is 45 minutes and then our appointment steps every hour. So if someone books, no one will be able to book within that, you know, it, it'll block out an hour for me. So it gives you 15 minutes before the next meeting. Or exactly. Yeah, yep. yeah, and then we can set the uh, forward. So as soon as they submit their booking, I can tell them to go to a specific page. So this is great for like sales funnels. You're like, thanks for submitting here. Take a look at this. You can send them off to another funnel, like an upsell or whatever you want to do there. Uh, we also added, um, you can add a custom CSS file and you can stylize the way that these appointment forms look now. Um, we're going to have a few uh, templates and things for this uh, coming soon. Um, but back to what we were doing here is we, I just want to take this embed code here and it's an iframe. Same thing as like a YouTube video or the Google maps thing that you want to do. Yeah. All I got to do is copy this control C highlight it and control C. We'll go back into the builder. here demo back to the home actually I want to create a booking I want to create its own booking page so what we'll do is we'll create another page so add a page or temp, uh, template and we'll just do booking and then we'll do make sure we do advanced you can, see, you, can you um copy a page uh, you can't with a button but yeah you can copy a page so what you would do for that is open the expert editor let me see Just copy the HTML exactly and then create a new page and paste it over um, so all I want to do for this is I'll just want to grab a header we'll put in the header here we'll say consultation and then what I'll do for the layout we'll do our layout structure members 
section and I want to put it in a container. I'll delete that and then I will put it in a, I want a row in there because I'm going to put a, a heading. Uh, so we'll grab a typography, we'll grab the, the small heading. You know, whatever, and then we'll do, um, we'll do uh, another single column outside that's going to put it inside of the first column and I don't want to do that so I got to make sure that I take a look at my hierarchy over here and now I know I'm directly below the section You're inside the container but not e the column exactly and so that's and I can test it and make sure okay that's the container that's the first row and then I yeah. click on the second row so now I know I'm good and then all I got to do here, we're going to save that. I'm going to go into the expert editor, format this. And I know, okay, here's my first row here. And then here's the second row that I drag in. And if I, if I click, it tells me. So I know everything inside is the second row, right? So that's the start and the end of that row. So all I got to do here is take this. And I'm actually just going to paste it inside of that column because there should be a column in there too. So I'm just going to get rid of that and go paste. We'll save this and we'll take a look at it. So preview. And then there's our booking form. And it just works right out of the box. Now you can customize this stuff, you know, if you get, you can start playing with these things here. If you change the height and stuff, um, it's not necessary in most cases, but if you do, you can see how this got shorter. Yeah. But you got to make sure because if you have a lot of time, you know, you just want to make sure that you, you know, if you're going to start tinkering with things, just, just make sure you go through your process and make sure you don't run into any, um, unexpected things that you might have changed on that but yeah all works everything looks good there um and so that's all i did I just copy that out paste it i can move it if i don't want it in there um i can do let's take this whole row here and then i'm going to go up to the container here on the header and i'm actually going to stick it this might break something. I'm just showing you this just for fun. Um, save. And now we might stick, we might have shoved it in there. Yeah, see, so it didn't go where I wanted it to. I wanted it to go in there, but I would have had to create a layout here and put these in a row um, and then stuck that over there below it. But I mean, essentially this still could kind of work if it was, but it didn't go where I wanted. So all I gotta do, we'll just put that back the way that it was. Control Z. Control Z is a really good thing. If you do something and you want to undo it, Control Z. Yeah, saves it up. <laughs> cool. Cool. So that's a, that's that covers right. most yeah. of the basics. If you got you got any other questions, was there anything else that that um, that? No. Well, I'll get stuck into all of that stuff and then um, come back to you if there's more. Yeah, I think that that'd be useful for others as well. But um. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they create a product from page set. So you guys can build your own templates too. You can share it with the community. You can charge money for them if you want it. Um, you know, that, that, that stuff's kind of up to you. Uh, Charles are going to be designing some, um, uh, some funnels, I think for us. Yeah, we've got a couple on the, um, we've got a couple coming out real soon, uh, that, that, that you guys will be able to, to use. Cool. Great stuff. So yeah, it's great. Great talking with you. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.